The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the uh, July 29th, the magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Yeah, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out <coughs> what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to give us a call, 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send that off early. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our tiger's den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on a magical, marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We begin our day with the mix back out there. The mix goes like this. The Dow's off 142. S&P's down 3. Russell's down 17. New York Stock Exchange off 68. The, S, uh, the NASDAQ 100 is up 35. Semi's up 22. Trendy's up 38. NASDAQ Composite up 15. Gold's off. Well, it's flat. Silver's off up 10 pennies. Lights Recruit is off 35 cents. Natural gas down 6 cents. And our 30 Treasury is off 14 ticks. Printed out at 119.25. The one thing I do notice right now is this morning we had the DAX trading higher. We got the DAX and NASDAQ 100 that typically from a directional standpoint correlate very strongly. And right now you got the DAX down 101. So it'll be interesting to see if the NDX 100 can continue to hold on to its gain. So just the very first thing that I would point out. Uh, what's the next thing that I'd point out? Now, we have been with you. I've been with, have been this first time back in probably about eight, nine trading sessions, something like that. My apology for that. Still dealing with uh, nasty COVID symptoms. This uh, this strain, I've had COVID three times. This one is the one that really kicked Stevie's butt out there. So it's just going to make me stronger. But right now, I'm still in kind of a weak position out there. And i got to go get some tests just to make sure that this thing doesn't turn into some kind of pneumonia or something along those lines. So I apologize ahead of time if I start hacking. That's the one thing that is, um, and it's a hack that's coming from the chest and the gut and the stomach. Not the throat is just fine out there in any event. So I do need your help today. So you can send me a request by email, by phone, uh, by uh, inside the Tiger's Den, just to kind of help guide me. But in the meantime, let me just share with you what I've seen, what I observed at least, and take a look at what the markets did over the uh, weekend. Not that they were trading over the weekend, just it was the first time I could really sit back and take a look what was going on. The very first thing that unfolded on Friday, really two things in combination with each other. The first thing was we had the spot volatility index Close lower by more than 10%. I'll find that chart here momentarily. It's usually right here. Where is it? Let's fix, fix, fix. Here we go. So here, if we take a look at this chart, the bottom portion measures each day's percentage movement. When we have days where we have an increase of above plus 10%, that typically uh, signals that we should expect or anticipate some type of bounce or rally the very next trading session. We get a move and it's marked by the green arrows. That's one to be focused on. We get those rates of change below minus 10%. They typically are an initiation move to higher price out. The last time we had one of those signals was back here at the lows in May, May 31st of 2024. That most certainly led to a rally out there. Now, typically when they these signals occur at at a low, such as Friday out there, you get a better, uh, uh, better um, set of parameters 
for price to move higher. For example, we had a one-day rate of change back on October 16, 2023, but markets in essence were at a high back then. Take a look at the one prior to that. That's the one back here from May, uh, June 1st of 2023 that most certainly led to higher price and you can see the prior ones as well out there so right now that signal suggests that we should see a further rally if we take a look at what transpired inside of how do we want to do this let's see so we can start here so if we take a look these are the daily equity future contracts so in addition to the spot volatilics which is a uh, which is really telling us about the s p 500 so in addition to getting to that signal of a, a continuation move to the upside you had a, a, a Gartley buy pattern that formed on Friday. It was a nice bull sash candle. You have a new profile that's attempting to form this morning. You've got support between 54.3250 and 54.5550. Uh, now, what price should do, it should rally up into the resistance zone, the sell zone, assuming that the profile takes hold at day's end. So that would suggest that we should see a rally up towards the 55.94 to 56.40 level. That's the only bottom pattern that we have. Now, if we take a look at the Dow equity future contract, so go down to the lower left, what you'll see is on Friday, is price closed above the top of its daily profile. Now, right now, you can't see it on my screen, but price is just pulling back and testing its oscillator and change line. The oscillator and change line, if that holds, and price closes back above the top of that uh, profile out there, the top of that profile being 47.83, that'll be a signal that we should head back to its most recent high out here. That's from the trading session of July 18. Price closes back inside uh, the uh, profile, and I would say below where we're trading right now, I would say if price were to close below 46.67, Price close below that at day's end, we likely get back to the uh, recent lows out here inside of the Dow Equity Future contract. In the case of the Russell 2000, it does not have a topping pattern <coughs> out there. <coughs> it did have a sell the D point pattern that was negated on Friday. If it were to generate a bearish reversal candle, again, you don't see it here, it would confirm a Rhodes Mintum indicator top out there. So no top at the moment inside of the Russell. Uh, the Dow kind of questionable. We need to see where price ends at the end of the day. <coughs> so the only bottom pattern being inside of the S&P 500 or the ES Mini out there. If we go switch over and take a look at, let's get over to my other sets of charts out here. Give me a moment. And what we'll do is go take a look at intraday what's going on inside the ES Mini since that's one that has the bottom pattern out there. Let's move over to that set of charts. And on this set of charts here, we take a look at the ES Mini. First, if we take a look at the 30-minute time frame chart, this formed a Roach Mintum indicator top. We'll just simply expand this out. So that has formed a Roach Mintum indicator top. Price right now is trading below its breakdown level, a breakout level of support at 54.95.75 out there. I don't know where we're going to end this session in 16 minutes, but if we do close below 54.95.75, that suggests we should see lower price. Now, lower price to where? That's a great question. So you're just simply going to have to go swing point by swing point. The first one would be at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on July 26th, and that level would be 54.82. Price were to get below that, I'd go take a look at the 10 a.m. swing point from July 26th, right around 54.70. Now that's what's going on on a short-term basis. The key to the upside, should there be a rally out here, is going to be closing above the two-hour TD9 count top. That's your real resistance level, 55.28 and a quarter. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So we did have the uh, NASDAQ 100 just slip to uh, slightly uh, below my, below zero out there. So kind of really following and tracking the uh, DAX out there. So maybe we'll be able to take a look at that. But let's get to a couple of questions that have come in here. Uh, the first one coming in from uh, G-Man, who is uh, thinking uh, sh at least short term short with regard to uh, Google out there. So that's what we've got up on our screen. So we take a look at uh, Google out here. What we can see is this formed a road momentum indicator top, confirmed that pattern on July the 11th. That's turned into an A to B equal CD pattern to the downside. Now, what you need to do here is, I don't know what this is gonna look like at day's end. The Friday high inside of Google was 169.84. The low so far this morning is 169.94. So you've got a 10 cent gap. So the first thing, G-Man, is if that gap doesn't get filled, the gap actually is a bullish reversal candle to confirm a uh, buy the D point pattern. If in fact price at least gets down there, it closes that gap, then there's no bullish reversal candle. Yes, we have price trained above the high of Friday, but that alone is not a bullish reversal signal out there. So at the moment, at 11.19, the message here from Google, let's assume that the gap does not get filled, that's suggesting a rally. That rally could take us up towards that oscillator and change line, bottom of its profile, 179.53 to 181.05. I'm not willing to make that call just yet, but that's what you'd be looking at as a potential rally into. So watch today's candle session. You're thinking short. You want to see that gap get filled. Now, now, what that also means, though, is if you were to see a bullish reversal candle, then that would confirm a buy the D point pattern. We look at the weekly chart which had a TD9 count top out there, it took price right back to its breakout level, 165.76. So although you don't have a bottoming pattern per se on the weekly time frame chart, you do. The do is that price is pulled back right to where it broke out, oftentimes in a bullish market. If this is a bullish market, price pulls back to its breakout area. That could either be a profile level of support. In this case here, it's a TD9 count breakout at 165.76. So although we're trading below profile support, if you put that with the daily time frame, you could absolutely see a bottom here inside of Google. 
we look at the monthly time frame chart. The month ends in a couple of days out there. We're going to get a, a TD9 count top. You're going to get a Rhodesman Dome indicator top. And so on a longer term basis, this is suggesting that we should get back towards 159. 91 level out there but right now it's going to be the daily and the weekly that are sort of controlling things and i would say it's more of the daily now in the case of google we've had uh if we take a look at its most recent activity we had two days of the downside one bar to the upside three days of the downside three bars to the upside friday was three bars to the downside so maybe we're getting ready for just a one bar move or maybe it's really a three bar move to the upside inside of uh, google what's the last piece of information that I can come up for you, G-Man. It would probably be by looking at a short-term chart. So let's put up a 30-minute chart. <laughs> See what we have here. We have Roach Mintum Indicator bottom. The price trading with inside its profiles. So the resistance level to watch is 172.84. And the support level, I would say, is 166.74 out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at Google. Watch today's candle. That ought to give you the piece of information that you're looking for. And G-Man, thanks as always for uh, uh, for your request. Uh, Joe D. inside the Tigers Den wants to take a look at XHB. So we take a look at XHB. It's trading out right now at 116.68. This has a TD9 count top that is still in place out here. This is for Joe. Uh, so, Joe, if uh, price were to close above the high from July 18, the high is 117.17. If price were to close above that, it negates that pattern. And because price would be traded above profile, price would be traded above its oscillator and change line, that would suggest a further rally. A bearish reversal candle would confirm a Rhodes Mintum indicator top out there. That's not what we have at the moment. So watch today's close or tomorrow's close out there. Again, a close above that high from July 18th says that XHB, which is the home builders ETF, continues to move higher. The weekly time frame chart last week negated its TD9 count top. It's trading above profile. It's trading above its green oscillator and change line. Its message to you and I is that this wants to move higher. If we look at the monthly time frame chart, we have that same message. Just had a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Now, there's a possibility that this could sell off and, and negate what I'm about to say. It doesn't look like it at this moment. But the resistance level of that Rhodes Mintum indicator top was at 111.74. We're at 116.64. I'm not seeing any kind of signal on the daily or the weekly to suggest that this thing should fall off the cliff or anything. So it looks to me... Like what we've got out here is you've just got a little bit of daily resistance and a price close above that TD9 count top, Jody, price should continue to move higher because that's the message of the monthly and the uh, week and the uh, weekly chart for XHB. So I hope that helps you out. Gray Rock writes in, he says, what's Russell 2000 going to do for the next couple of days out there? So a great question. I don't know if I know the answer to that, but let's see what the charts are communicating to you and I. First, let's see if I can find the chart for the Russell. That's not it. That's this. So here, when we take a look at this gray rock, the left-hand side is the cash index. The center is the uh, uh, futures contract, and the very right is the IWM. So we've got all three of these. So what is their current message of the market? Well, in the case of the Russell 2000 cash indice, it has a sell the D point top that formed out here on July 17th with that bearish shooting star candle. Since then, we've had a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal that was triggered on Friday. If we do get a bearish reversal candle today, you'd have a Rhodes Mintum indicator top as well. Does that mean that two tops means it's a more significant top than one top? Not, not at least as far as I'm concerned. Not that I've been able to visually see out there. Top is a top whether you have one, two, three, four, five. So what should price do here? Well, just like when it formed that roads, uh, that sell the D point top, price pulled back to its oscillator and change line it held. So it's really kind of a neutral signal right now. It would get less than neutral if we close below 2220. But I would say right now the daily time frame for the cash index is suggesting to move back to support. And that's around 2220. If we look at the day at the daily time frame for the equity future contract, it does not have a topping signal just yet. However, if we were to form a bearish reversal candle today, at the moment it's a dark cloud cover. The dark cloud cover says you have to close halfway inside of the body from the prior session out there. I'm not going to do that calculation, but um, you can certainly do that uh, gray rock out there. And if price were to close below that level, then you'd have a dark cloud cover, which would give you a Rhodes Mentum indicator top. That too would suggest to move back to support, which is 2237. So even if we do that, not till price close below the oscillator and change line, when we move from anything more than really just a neutral signal. And in the case of the Russell 2000, same patterns as the cash indice, sell the D-point top. 
that sell the D point top would be negated with a close above 226.64. Looks like today may form a road momentum indicator top as well. So what this signal is telling us, you're saying for the next few days, right now at the moment at 1125, it's suggesting that price pulls back to test support. IWM 220 and change, 2237 and change for the Russell 2000 equity future contract, 2221 for the cash indice out there. Now let's take a quick peek here. I did change this over on the uh, daily intraday charts out here to the Russell 2000 equity future contract. And so let's see what we have going on on the very short term basis, if anything. 60 minutes trading below its breakout level of support. 30 minutes doing the same thing out there, although it is trying to rally. Um, you've got the 15 minute chart is the one with the bottom pattern. That's a TD nine count bottom. So what price should do here, very short term, is rally up towards the 2270 level out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We come back from this break. Let's take a look at the CHK for Alton, uh, XPEV for GTE. We we'll also would like to take a look at the Hang Seng. I'll see if I get those charts up on the screen. Tigers, it's back. The annual July Tiger Dollar Sale. If you've been wanting to try one of our products, from our stellar newsletters to educative webinars, now is the time. From now until August 1st, we're offering a 20, 30, even a 40% bonus on Tiger Dollar purchases. After being applied to your account, your Tiger Dollars will be used for all purchases. They can be easily transferred and they never expire. If you want to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus from purchasing Tiger Dollars, now is your chance. This is a perfect opportunity to try out a newsletter or save big on your current subscription. This deal is only available until August 1st. So lock in your bonuses fast. Go to TFNN.com today to lock in your bonus. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento Friday, July 12th and Friday, July 26th, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern Time for three hours of live trading. For this month only, use promo code LarryJuly24 at checkout to save $50 on your first month's subscription. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, let's take a look at uh, Chesapeake Energy. This is for Alton, who's looking to add to his position. So Alton today is going to complete a daily TD nine count bottom pattern. This is the bar following bar number nine. So if you were to get a close below today's low, whatever that is, I don't know that we've achieved today's low just yet. The current low is 76.13. But if price closes below today's low, let's say tomorrow, that tells you about a strong downward momentum move out there and that the buy point would have uh, just failed on that T or the buy pattern would have failed out there. And the reason to consider that potentially is because uh, first price below the red oscillator and change line is below profile support. So, you know, that could lead to lower price. When I look at the weekly chart, it has a, a TD9 count uh, bottom that uh, should form by next week out there. Um, so that could lead to lower price, and 74.70 is its initial price target. Monthly chart for Chesapeake Energy is back into its basic buy zone. It's a bullish structured profile. The buy zone is between 61.58 and 76.43. So what do you do? Is today's low a bottom? If it were to be a bottom, what we would see or typically see is on the intraday charts, we see some kind of bottoming patterns. Now, I do have a wave number seven bottom on a 30 minute time frame chart. That's likely to go ahead, well, I don't know. It should go ahead and confirm by noon out there, but price is below resistance levels or below support levels, what I should say. Um, so kind of questionable. Let's look at a 65-minute time frame chart for you. That would be another chart we'd be looking for a bottom. This needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom pattern out there. And lastly, let's look at that 130-minute time frame chart. What do we have here? You have a TD9 count uh, bottom that would fail on 130 on 130-minute time frame with a close below 76.49. Now, you could get that close below at 1140, so you've got eight minutes out there. So if at 1140 you see prices trading below uh, 7649, then this pattern will have failed. And I would say let's be um, let's just be careful here on that daily TD9 count bottom. And since you already have a position trying to add to it, maybe you wait, we wait till tomorrow we come back and we take a look at that. So that's what I see right now, Alton, when we take a look at Chesapeake. I hope that helps you out. As always, thanks so much for your kind words and your request out there. Uh, GTE wanted to take a look at a couple instruments. One is XPEV. And if we take a look at this, what we have is we have price that is trading above the top of its daily profile. The top of its profile is 812. I don't see any kind of a topping pattern out here. Um, so on a further pullback, you'd be looking for 812 to hold the support. Consolidation on the weekly time frame. This has been consolidating for quite some time out there. Right now, the consolidation zone is between 696 and 860. On a monthly time frame, I don't see a bottom pattern per se. I do see price as uh, dealing with profile resistance at about 899 and down at about the uh, level of uh, 777. So if price were to close below 777, that would tell us about a further move lower out there. So just a consolidation, not a lot to report, but you at least on the daily time frame are beginning to get higher highs and higher lows out there. You also wanted to take a quick peek at the Hang Seng out there. You had mentioned the Hang Seng has closed lower for two consecutive months or will close lower for two consecutive months. So let's go take a look at that chart out there, which is right here. Let me just simply expand that out. And what I've popped up for you here, GTE, is the uh, monthly time frame chart. So on a monthly time frame chart, you've got two TD9 count bottom patterns out here. The first one went ahead and formed back in November of 2022, led to a nice rally. No idea why it stopped where it did. Moves lower and then forms a TD9 count bottom in January of 2024. So right now, price is testing that candle, that monthly candle. If at the end of the month, you see a close above 17,135.12, or 17,238 for the close. That would be a test and rejection of that swing point high, that TD9 count monthly swing point high. That would suggest we would see higher price out there. So if we look at the daily time frame, I'll put that up on our screen here momentarily. just want to go ahead and change one thing here. We'll put up a different template so I've got more accurate data. And what we're going to see here is that uh, inside the Hang Seng, you had a TD9 count bottom pattern that went ahead and confirmed today. The key is, will price get above, close above its oscillator and change line? GTE, if you see a close above 17.374, the Hang Seng is going to rally, and that rally should take us up to 17.864.12. If we're to close above 17.864.12, you would have a change in trend signal 
regarding this TD9 count breakout levels. Now, as long as we're here, you can take a look at what's going on overseas as well in the Shanghai. Shanghai needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a road momentum indicator bottom. The uh, Nikkei went ahead and confirmed and completed a TD9 count bottom pattern today. That should take us up towards the 39,625 level. We have a good old-fashioned consolidation inside of the FTSE. Early this morning, price was trading above the top of the consolidation. Looked like it was a breakout. That clearly is not the case, at least not as of 11.36. And then finally, when we look at the DAX, you can see the DAX opened up, gapped up this morning, and has continued to sell off. But we haven't taken out Friday's lows or anything like that, where we've taken out Friday's highs. So in the case of the DAX, I don't have a real clear signal as to what its intents are. So GTE, hope that helped out with regard to the instruments that you were looking for. And as always, thanks for your request. Dan in New York City would like to take a look at uh, SMR. He's looking to start a long position there. So let's get over to that set of charts. <clears throat> and here we go. Now, SMR today is going to form bar number eight of a TD9 count pattern for its daily time frame. It's also confirming, it looks like to me, an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. So... <coughs> So the B point of an A to B equals CD pattern, the swing point would be July 22nd. 8.4 million shares today, we're at 8.9 million shares. So this thing could be forming an A to B equals CD pattern. No, it is forming. That could be. It is forming an A to B equals CD pattern. So let's just try to see if we can draw that in here, give you a feel for where that's headed to. It's not going to be exactly accurate, but we weren't going to be dead on balls accurate anyways. So the A to B equals CD pattern says that this should pull back towards about the $6 level out there. But today's going to be, as I say, bar number eight of a TD9 count. There's a possibility that SMR could bottom between today and Wednesday out there. I wouldn't say today is the day, um, just simply because we're taking out that swing point with lighter volume. So maybe it's just simply the TD9 count pattern needs to go ahead and complete. And that would be on uh, Wednesday of this week out there. The weekly time frame, you can see that we are trading into its buy zone. The buy zone is between 764 and 970. The monthly chart, which was looking beautiful, uh, what it did was it uh, formed a little double top out there by getting all the way. That's all this month by getting back to. Oops, sorry. By getting back to its highs from August of 2022, turns out the TD9 count breakdown resistance level is a key area of resistance as well. Twelve dollars. <coughs> excuse me. And fourteen cents. We come back from this break. We're going to take a look at AQST for McGuppy inside the Tiger's Den and anything, any other requests that come in as well. Steve Roach with TFN. We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, You've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're looking at AQST, a uh, Questive Therapeutics, Inc. Uh, this is for McGuppy. Uh, I think, McGuppy, you were looking for... You've got a long and a short-term position, it's had a big move. Where do you see support? What's the longer-term outlook? So on a daily time frame, this thing is all out bullish. On a weekly time frame, I would say the same thing. In the monthly time frame, price is dealing with a resistance zone, which is between 374 and 474. So you got that dollar that you've got to uh, deal with. Uh, I'm not saying that it can't get through there. That's just going to be your choppy zone out there. Um, so your resistance up at 474. The weekly chart has resistance at 454. And on a daily time frame, where's the next resistance level? Give me a moment here. We'll go and figure that out for you. See what line pops up. Uh, put in two lines here. The next resistance area in a uh, daily time frame is going to be 438. Support on a daily time frame, 330, which is the top of its daily profile. Support on a weekly time frame, 339. Below that, it would be 286. And on the monthly time frame, it's two and a quarter would be the uh, level. So what are the charts suggesting? To me, the charts are suggesting higher price. I think it'll be bumpy. Um, but I'm, we're looking at higher price here. Uh, with those price targets that I was able to give you that were basically the TD Nankow breakdown level. So McGuppy, I hope that that helps you out. That's what I see. And as always, thanks for your request. John C. wanted to take a look at Tesla. So let's go see what Tesla is doing. Tesla is trading below profile support in the screen oscillator and change line. It does have a uh, buy the D point pattern. Well, maybe, maybe not. Can, let me just take a look at something off screen here, if I can. I think that retracement negates its uh, possible A to B equals CD pattern, but I just want to be sure about that. So let me just make sure. Visually, that's what it looks like to Stevie, but I could be wrong. Nope. So I don't have any kind of A to B equals CD pattern out here uh, so here's what I would say with regard to Tesla we're trading about Friday's high looks like it wants to try to rally up to resistance resistance or the first level of resistance on a daily time frame we 235.94 so is it getting ready to try to set up an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside and that I don't know it's possible um, that pattern the A to B point would now be from here the high from uh, trading set for July 11th down to the low yeah, down to the low on the trading day of uh, July 24th out there. So that's our potential A to B point out there. The C point could be today's high. I'm not saying that it is. We're trading above, again, we've got a gap to the upside. We're trading above Friday's high. I think 235.93 is where it wants to target. On a weekly time frame, 
We have a sell the D point pattern that took price back to support, which was the bottom of its profile. So 219.21, .29, uh, John, is going to be a key level of support to watch on a monthly time frame. Tesla is, looks like it may form a profile change in trend, with price closing above its green asset and change line. So longer term, it's bullish. A weekly, it's completed its task of that sell the D point pattern by getting back to support. And then a daily, it's just not really a clear signal out there. Uh, is there anything else that I can provide John with on Tesla? Let's take a look at consecutive days, upside, downside. Um, you know, it looks like you're going to get probably a two to three bar rally out here. That's what I would expect when I take a look at Tesla. So I hope that that helps you out along with the reasons why and what to anticipate. Um, dude wants to take a look at a ticker symbol called ADMA. I didn't get a chance to get that up. So we'll fire that up right here. And we'll go take a look at what that is doing. ADMA is, um, if you look at it, holding a long position, looks like it will bottom at this level. Let's find out. So about four days ago, this confirmed a road's momentum indicator top. And price is trading below that green asset and change line. So we know here, dude, is it's lost its momentum. So if it's lost momentum, where's it going to find support? The first level of support that it should test would be 1241, the top of its profile. If price were to close below 1241, then we'd be likely looking to move to 1169 to 1193. No bottoming pattern here, but no key levels of support have failed either. So you got to watch how does price handle support. And again, 1241 is the number. On a weekly time frame, I don't have any kind of a topping signal that I can see. The monthly time frame is going to form bar number eight this month, but that says you could get a top between uh, July and September out there, so pretty wide range. So your questions were, looks, you're saying it looks like it'll bottom at this level. So I would go with the bottom more towards 1241 as a potential spot out there versus where we're at right now. On this consecutive moves higher and lower out here, I don't see anything um, unusual, nothing to suggest that the bullish trend has broken, at least not as of uh, yet. And uh, on a shorter term basis, let's see what we can find out here. Here we've got a 10 minute chart, 10 minute chart, no signal of any sort. Let's go to a 30 minute time frame chart, see if there's any pattern out here. You do have a wave number seven signal so all that needs is uh, on this uh, 30 minutes, so at uh, 12 noon, as long as price doesn't tick below 12.55, you've got a bottoming signal. The price is going to need to, well, let me do this here. You get the right template up. And here, price should rally up towards 12.87, that red oscillator and change line. If it can clear that, then you've got a uh, uh, where a 30-minute counter trend move would fail would be at about uh, between 13.12 and 13.17 out there. So has this bottom? I don't see the bottom just yet. Looks to me like it wants to go tag that 12.41 area out there. So, dude, I hope that helps you out. As always, thanks for your request. Um, Satish would like to take a look at BX. Long or short is the question. So let's take a look at that. Could take just a moment here for these charts to uh, populate. And we're looking at Blackstone, Blackstone trading out at 141. Your question is, again, long or short. It has a TD9 count top. That formed back here on the trading day of July 23rd. That has led to a consolidation with inside its profile, the upper portion of its profile, which means between 137.35 and 143.60. You ask buy, you say long or short. It's neutral. It's neutral signal. We take a look at the daily time frame. The weekly time frame is in a buy. Why? Because price, there's no topping pattern. Price is above its oscillator and change line and its profile. And on a monthly time frame, it's also in a buy. The price is taking out a, a TD9 count breakdown resistance level. It's trading into a swing point. Might be its all-time high swing point, Blackstone. Takes you back to November of 2021. 76 million shares traded hands that month. This month, we are up into it with 76.5 million shares. So, you're going to close inside a swing point with volume. What Blackstone should do is go target that swing point high. 149.78 is the call uh, based upon the monthly charts. Daily, again, is neutral. Weekly chart is bullish out there. So I hope that helps you out. Um, ELO would like to take a look at NVIDIA, NVDA, which I believe had formed a buy the D point. 
<laughs> no, it didn't. It could have, but it didn't. So that's what it's waiting for. So you've got an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. Price finding supported its breakout level, which is 106.94. A bullish reversal candle forms. You would then have a Gartley buy pattern ELO inside of NVIDIA. Watch 106.94 on any move lower out there. Price did close below the bottom of its weekly profile, 114.50 on Friday. A second consecutive close would suggest 81 and a quarter could be its price target. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back and I'll finish off NVIDIA as well. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. So if we take a look at the monthly chart for NVIDIA, kind of interesting here in that on Wednesday, it's going to go ahead and complete uh, or confirm a TD9 count top. So if we look at his other TD9 count tops, there was one that formed back in September, uh, August and September of 2023. That led to a pullback to support the buy zone of its profile out there. We had another TD9 count top that had formed back in November of 2021. That led to a move down until it formed a TD9 count bottom. So I would say at this stage of the game here that the NVIDIA respects its TD9 counts. And that suggests that what NVIDIA may really be doing is pulling back the test support, which right now it stands at 86.75 on the monthly time frame. You don't have to go there. Um, if we're going to get there, price is going to break through the daily TD9 count breakout support at 106.94. If it does that, then we've got that move to 86 and change out there even 81 and a quarter. So a little bit tricky when we take a look at the NVIDIA chart. I wish it wasn't tricky, but it is. Last request is to take a look at SLX is for Tom. He would like to take a look at support and resistance. Well, 
on a daily time frame, support is going to be at about 68.45, maybe down to 67.70. I don't really have any resistance on the uh, daily time frame, other than I guess this little gap to the downside, and that's a gap that formed back on June uh, 3rd out there. So maybe there's resistance at 70.64. On a weekly time frame chart, support at 68.99. Next resistance level is 70.71 and above that 72.43. On a, a monthly time frame, resistance at 71.42. Support between 56.81 and 61.68 out there. Monthly's got a road momentum indicator top with a sideways consolidation out here. So that's what I see when we take a look at uh, that. Lastly, let me switch over real quickly here. Take a look at what's going on in the currency side of uh, things because you've got the U.S. dollar index moving higher. But you're going to get a TD9 count bottom pattern on the euro that likely forms between today and Wednesday. If we take a look at the uh, Japanese yen. This already has a TD9 count bottom. That says a price should move higher. It means it should weaken. The dollar would get stronger. And you're going to get a TD9 count bottom likely inside the Great British Pound between today and Wednesday. So I guess that kind of makes sense with us coming into the Fed meeting on Wednesday out there. Folks, great to be back with you. Uh, and uh, I'll look forward to seeing you again, hopefully tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. sharp. Take care and have a wonderful, magnificent Monday. <laughs>